Thank you uh, very much, Congressman Grijalva. It is uh, absolutely an honor to always uh, appear with you in so many different uh, venues. And it seems like it was just yesterday that we were at the rim of the Grand Canyon with uh, Director Abbey and Director Jarvis and uh, Dr. McNett. And uh, today we bring uh, that effort uh, full circle. Thank you for your leadership on so many issues. And Congressman Markey, uh, I still can beat you basketball today. But uh, today, as we move forward with this uh, iconic step to protect uh, the Grand Canyon, we uh, celebrate together uh, a great uh, accomplishment on behalf of the environmental community. Let me uh, say also to uh, my good friend, uh, Harris Sherman, the Undersecretary of, uh, of uh, the United States Department of Agriculture, he and uh, my colleague on the cabinet, Tom Vilsack, along with uh, Tom Tidwell have been partners with us in conservation as we advance the America's Great Outdoors agenda for the people of the United States. And um, from a person who opened the door for me uh, on conservation almost 30 years ago with the Trust for Public Lands, uh, it's an honor to be here today with you to celebrate uh, this great event. And from the Department uh, of Interior, there are uh, many people who have worked on this uh, very hard, including my Deputy Secretary of Interior, David J. Hayes, uh, his assistant, uh, Megan Conklin, who you have heard from. And then at the Grand Canyon, people who have worked so hard on so many of the issues from water flows uh, on the uh, Colorado River to the geology and uh, science related to uranium mining to the mission of the National Park Service uh, and uh, this iconic landscape to the director that actually oversees uh, and uh, manages many of these lands that we're talking about today. So I want to just uh, give a quick shout out Dan Castle, the Assistant Secretary for Water and Science, to uh, Marsha McNutt, the uh, Director of the United States Geological Survey, the best earth science agency in the world, to John Jarvis, the Director of the National Park Service, uh, who oversees America's Best Idea, uh, to Bob Abbey, who oversees uh, some 250 million acres on behalf of the American people, to uh, Jane Leiter, who has actually been a superintendent for a time at Grand Canyon and helps us on so many issues, and Peggy O'Dell, who is our deputy director for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, uh, and Rachel uh, Jacobson, who is our assistant secretary for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, and to our great leader of the America's uh, Great Outdoors uh, program, and that is uh, uh, Will Shafroth, who uh, really has uh, brought so much heart to this whole program. So if you'll all stand up, let's give them all a round of applause. There are many others that I miss. I see Ted Bowling and so many others in the audience. Uh, but also uh, beyond just uh, the Department of Agriculture and Secretary Vilsack and the Department of Interior, we are uh, honored to really be able to do much of what we do in the world of conservation because we have a great partner in President Obama and in the leadership of the Council of Environmental Quality. And today, representing CEQ, also a master of the America's Great Outdoors program, Mike Boots. Mike, please stand. So it's uh, fitting that we are gathered here at the National Geographic Society to celebrate an icon of the American landscape. And uh, John Fahey, thank you for what you do to um, help us celebrate the geography of this entire earth and for the legacy that the National Geographic gives to our country. A gorge like the Colorado River Gorge reveals the ancient secrets of our continent. A mighty river whose uh, sacred sculpture draws travelers from near and far from all around the world. Here at the National Geographic, we are reminded that the rich endowment of parks, rivers, wildlife, and wilderness with which we are entrusted is not merely a blessing from the natural world, but a living monument to the character and courage of those who came before us. For every Yosemite, for every Pelican Island, for every Redwood Forest, there is a story of Americans standing up to do what is hard, but what is right by our country. Time and again, we as a nation have shown that our strength cannot just come from the power of our industry and technology, but also from the wisdom of restraint. It was in the spirit that more than a century ago, in this spirit, that President Theodore Roosevelt advised us, the, our ancestors here in the United States, 
Leave it as it is. You cannot improve on it. The ages have been at work on it, and man can only mar it. Every generation of Americans faces moments when we must choose between the pressures of the now and the protection of the timeless. Today, we know we can no longer afford to turn our backs on the rivers of America and iconic landscapes like the Grand Canyon. Whether it's the snows on the peaks of the Rockies or the creeks that flow through the forests, all waters ultimately flow into one. There, in the Grand Canyon, in the case at hand at the Colorado River, waters roar through that canyon, and they feed our crops and the water that flows from our faucets. There, we see what those of us who have known about the importance of water, the reality of water. The water is the lifeblood of humanity and life on this planet. Therefore, we must do everything that we can to protect our waters and the watersheds from which they spring. That is why, based on the input of thousands and thousands of Americans from sea to shining sea, we are moving forward with a decision today, which I will sign in a few minutes, to withdraw more than one million acres around Grand Canyon National Park from new mining claims for the next 20 years. In doing so, as uh, others have said today, Harris Sherman, we will honor valid existing mining rights. And we expect continued natural resource development in the area on existing leases and valid rights. But the withdrawal is important because it will prevent a rush of mining claims. Well, we don't yet know what the effects of mining near the Grand Canyon would be. That is an effort which the National Park Service and USGS and others have been working on, and they will continue to work on it. The 20 years time out on new claims will allow us to develop more information about many things, including the impacts of existing operations and the nature of the underground aquifers and watersheds that extend far beyond the boundaries of the park. Considering what is at stake in the Grand Canyon, BLM Director Bob Abbey and Chief Tidwell are absolutely right to advise that we proceed cautiously. They are joined and supported in this decision by Secretary Vilsack and the rest of our colleagues in both departments. In this decision, we must always remember that conservation is also part of job creation. Sometimes in our conversations about tourism and recreation and conservation, we forget the fact that there are over eight million jobs that are associated with what we do with respect to outdoor recreation in America. No place is that story told better than in the Grand Canyon. Four million people from all over the world come and visit the Grand Canyon every year. That's four million people. Tourism generates three and a half billion dollars in local economic activity. And because of champions like Raul Grijalva, that kind of economic engine will be there for a long time to come. The Grand Canyon and jobs that are associated with the Grand Canyon are not jobs that can be exported anywhere. Those are truly American jobs that will be here forever. And then there is the importance of our tribal communities and recognizing that the first Americans of this country regard the Grand Canyon as a very special and sacred place. So standing up for the values of the nation's first Americans is something which President Obama and I are very proud to do. Now I know, like in all things that uh, we do at Interior, uh, that there are some who will disagree with this decision. There, will some, there were some who believe that we should just rush forward and allow under the 1872 mining law a rush of claims for uranium to be staked throughout these one million acres plus. But we disagree. We disagree because we believe that this area needs to be protected. I am therefore at peace with this decision because it is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do by way of protecting the Grand Canyon, the Colorado River, and the millions of Americans who live and rely on the waters of that great basin. I'm also proud because the step we take today to protect the Grand Canyon is just one of countless actions that Americans are taking across the country to restore rivers in their own communities, to protect 
their farms and their ranches, and to introduce the next generation of Americans to the great outdoors. Now that's what President Obama had in mind when the President announced over a year ago the Great Outdoors Initiative. And we've been working hard to implement that initiative throughout the United States of America. We are carrying forward that unique, uniquely democratic and unique, uniquely American tradition of protecting the places that we love and care for, for the benefit of all Americans. So today, let us celebrate the legacy of Teddy Roosevelt and John Wesley Powell and marvel at the timeless wonder of the Grand Canyon. But let us also, as we marvel at what we are doing here today, also celebrate and look forward to the work ahead as we move forward under the leadership of President Obama and the Americans' Great Outdoors Program. That means we will look forward to hundreds of locally driven, locally supported trails, parks, and open space projects sprouting up with the support of America's great outdoors throughout the country, where in every state of the union we have identified two priority conservation projects and one for the District of Columbia. We will make them a reality. We look forward to new back, back country areas that Congress should act to protect in a public lands bill yet in 2012. Congress should act. They have no excuse not to act. We look forward to the next generation of great urban parks for the 21st century in places like New York and Jamaica Bay and St. Louis and the Arch and the Mississippi River and Denver and the Rocky Mountain Arsenal and Refuge and Rocky Mountain National Park and Chicago along the Indiana Dunes and the great trails along the lakes. To salmon, returning to the San Joaquin River where for the first time in over 50 years water flowed in that river just in the last year. We look forward to the short grass prairies of the Dakotas and saving the short grass prairies for the wildlife that it nurtures and for future generations who use the Dakota short grass prairies. And we look forward to completing our efforts to protect the tall grass prairies of the Flint Hills of Kansas where the last of the remaining of the 1.1 million acres of the tall grass prairies of America resides today. And we look forward to doing so in all of those places because in part, we also will pres preserve the ranching way of life. We look forward to a river of grass, which is finally restored in a world heritage site, which we all know as the Everglades, and on which so many of us have worked so hard and on which we have made so much progress over the last three years. And finally, we look forward to a protected and unified crown of the continent from Glacier all the way down to Yellowstone, where we continue to make huge progress with all of those communities, and to much, much more as part of the America's Great Outdoors agenda. In conclusion, we take this step today because it is a serious and necessary step. But as we take this step today, in its seriousness, we also remind ourselves of the values that drive us to take these kinds of actions. And they are first, recognizing the importance that the United States of America has played in the conservation agenda of the entire world. There is no doubt that whether you are in Brazil or in India or anywhere in Europe, that they all look to America as the example for conservation. Now, when you look at a place like the Grand Canyon, we carry out the great example through this protective measure because we're saying, yes, this place is very special, and we need to make sure that we can and will protect it. So setting aside a million acres as part of the protective buffer for the Grand Canyon is a way of continuing to lead the conservation agenda, which Teddy Roosevelt and so many other people have worked on uh, for so long. And secondly, and it is always important to remind the people of the United States, because conservation is not always popular, just ask the people who were involved in the debate under the Antiquities Act in Fort Monroe and efforts that were undertaken to try to undo that law. Or just ask those who are opposed to other conservation measures that we have countless of them going on around the country. Sometimes in those debates what is forgotten is that economic value which really is a defining point of our time today in 2012. When you look at the debates at the national level, the presidential contenders, 
So much of it is focused on the economic crisis. And yes, it is an economic crisis that has been the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. But the President and all of our team are optimistic that our best days are ahead. And indeed, when you look at job creation over the last several years, we have been making steady progress. But as we make that steady progress to establish the economic stability of the United States, it's important for us all to remember that tourism and leisure are very much a part of the job creation agenda for the United States. I will never forget the report that uh, McKenzie Global International uh, delivered to us in which they said that of the 14 or so million jobs that we will create between now and 2021, that the second most promising sector of job creation is through conservation and tourism. And so in the days ahead, you will hear more about what it is that we're doing to try to get tourism to the point where it receives the kind of recognition that it should receive and where we connect up the nexus between conservation and job creation in America. So with that, I would like to take an important first step here at the beginning of this 2012 and go ahead and sign the record of decision which will protect the one million acres plus around the Grand Canyon.